Loyalty to Rangers is what binds us. And together, we are stronger. Launching for the 2021 season, the MyJers membership programme is a new way to get even closer to the club you love. It's the one place where you can access benefits like ticketing priority, club discounts and exclusive competitions and experiences. There's even a limited edition welcome gift when you join. Visit rangers.co.uk slash myjers to join today. Always Rangers, always loyal, always rewarded. Jones delivers. Just brace yourself. Rangers are coming. Rangers, Rangers, easy, okay. Okay. Oh, Fancy's very strong. Again, I've got a battle fever on, but Fancy Rangers still with it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of yesterday's series, a hero series on the Battle Fever podcast. My name's Scott Gray, and today I'm joined by a man who had a hand in many memorable occasions across a three-year three spell at the club, or three spells, sorry, at the club. He's, of course, Kerry Miller. Good afternoon, Kerry. How are you doing? Afternoon, pal. How are you? I'm not bad, mate. I'm not bad. How's lockdown? Boring. Uh, frustrating. <laughs> uh, managing to get a few things done. Uh, obviously, trying to keep busy, but it's uh, obviously just looking forward to getting back to work, and hopefully that's not too far away. Of course, you'll have the homeschooling and all that, won't you? Well, I'm the teacher. Uh, the teacher. <laughs> Some days, it's, uh, I think we'll have to take it. I was going to say day about. It's more like hour about. Because it's uh, that for sure. So we're getting ready to kill the test. So let's, uh, we're taking it in shots, taking it in turns. <laughs> obviously, you started your career um, at Hibs. Obviously, the Rangers podcast, so we'll get to the Rangers stuff. But just leading into the Rangers, now you started your career at Hibs. How is it? Can I grow up as a, a, as a young player at, at Hibs in the days? It was great. We were, a, we were a good, it was about 14 of us were on the ground staff. Uh, obviously doing the boots, doing the jobs, running about Easter Road. Uh, had Donald Park as our, our, our youth team coach, reserve coach, and he was excellent. So he was, he was a, a big, big part in our football and education, which was which was great, but I loved it. You know, I mean, to be honest, I I, I really enjoyed that kind of camaraderie amongst the amongst the young lads. Obviously, you're there for eight in the morning until five, six at night. Some nights doing your jobs, you're always uh, you spent a lot of time together. So that that was really good. But and I, I couldn't wait to get off it and not have to do the jobs <laughs> and scrub the floor and all that. So it was uh, it was a good it was a good couple of years. Really, really enjoyed it. And then obviously. Uh, Making that breakthrough to the first team was obviously the ultimate goal, and I was I was pretty fortunate. I'd done that, I'd done that pretty quickly into my into my career. You went loan to Stenhouse. We heard just how key was that as a young player to get kind of game time under your belt and, and get to to play in real kind of men's football. That was huge. It was huge for me because I'd made my debut uh, the following season. Uh, sorry, the, the, the season before that, uh, a few substitute appearances. Then I played the. Uh, Last game of that season when we'd already been relegated uh, at Kilmarnock. And then I started a few games the following season in the first team and done pretty well. But uh, Alex McLeish had then obviously taken over uh, yeah. the, the job. And he had, he had made it pretty clear that he was going to go with the, the more experienced forward players to make sure they got back up. So that was Stevie Crawford. It was Barry Levetti. We just we had signed Mixu Patalainen. So uh, there was a good, there was a good bunch there. To be fair, that were and his eyes were ahead of me. So I had a wee taste of it. So like you say, when you've got a taste of that, you, you don't want to go back to youth football and playing with guys yeah. that are going to test myself. So the loan opportunity came up. Parker had sorted that with Teddy Christie, who was my old head schoolmaster. So uh, he took me to Steny and had a really good four months there. We got the, got the chance to make my first trip to Ibrox as well in the Scottish Cup, which was. Yeah. Uh, an incredible day for the club and obviously for me personally as well. It was my first outing uh, at, at Ibrox, so it was uh, no, it was a really good four months and had a huge huge part. Like you say, it's man's football and it's, it's, it's competitive. There's leagues to win, there's, trophy, there's, there's points to be played for, there's guys that have won bonuses that, that, that are there to be played for as well. So for me, it was great. And we ended up that season as much as I was only there four months. End up like oh, once I left and I came back, I still always looked to see the team were getting on because 
we were going for promotion that year and, and, and the team ended up getting promoted, you know. So yeah. I, I played my lot part and, and even that early and like kind of a, a kind of successful group and, and ended up with promotion to the to the next league, you know. So it was a, a real good loan spell and that like I said it, it served a real purpose on as, as part of my development as a player. I suppose it was kind of weird in some respects that when you went back to Hibs after your spell on loan, Hibs were obviously back into the, the, the Premier League uh, eventually. And you played a lot that season. You played, I think it was 30 games or something like that you played that season. Was was there any hesitation then, before we get to move on, which obviously you moved on at the end of that year to come to Rangers, but was there any hesitation on, no, I might stay at Hibs because I've just broke into the first team properly, I've played 30 games, you know, I'm doing really well? No, like, again, like, it's, for me, I, I wasn't pining for a move or, or, or looking for a move because, I, like you say, I, I, I came through... Had my loan spell. I made the breakthrough that year. Again, what helped that year? The under twenty one rule was there. If I don't know if you remember that, but the under twenty one rule was there that you needed to have two under twenty ones in your match day squad. So mm-hmm. I was probably the first ahead of the under twenty ones at Hibs. So I was pretty much always, as long as I was performing and fit, I was always going to be kind of in and about that 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 squad, that match day squad. So I had the opportunities and. Uh, again, I scored. I scored the winner in the second game of the season up at Dundee, last minute winner, uh, and it, things really just kicked on for there, you know. But like I said, I was enjoying my football. I just, I just signed a new contract actually, at Hibs in the January or the December. So I, like I move, speculation surrounds younger players all the time, you yeah. know. So uh, it was there. It was there pretty much for that last six, seven months of my time at, at, at Hibs. Uh, but then we fin- I finished the season of pretty well. I finished the top scorer. I won the young player of the year that year uh, in the league. So it was, a, it was a good year. But at the end of that season, there was opportunities there that, that were coming up again. At that moment, it, like, it's a bit different now or in the later stage of your career or when you're a wee bit more experienced, you, you know how the game works. You know? Whereas at that moment, I went on holiday. I was just looking forward to going on holiday and coming back to attack the next season. But then... Yeah. Opportunities arose. Alex came on the phone and had, had kind of and my agent had put me in the picture. There was a few options that could that we could leave. So Rangers being one of the options. So at that point, I done I done whatever I could to try and get that move that that move done. Yeah. Going going from the Hibs dressing room, obviously there was some experienced players in that ones that you were to previously. How did it compare what went to the, the, the dressing room at Ibrox? Obviously with the kind of world superstars that were in that that team. Well, you know, it was when you've grown up with these lads, like you say, there was some ex- really, really good senior pros in that Hibs team. I think guys like Pat McGinley and Bitten Darren Jackson was there for a time as well. John Hughes, uh, had some Reece, Sean Dennis, Stevie Crawford, and these kind of guys that were, and I'd become really good friends with Stuart Lovell, who again was a, he, he helped me a lot, but kind of taking me under his wing when I broke into the first team. So there was real good guys there, but you had kind of grew up with them as well. You yeah. know, like you had been in our for a while so you were quite familiar and as much as they always gave you stick and they were always on you but there was a good banner between that whereas you're walking into that you walk into that main door at Ibrox and you've got the, the marble staircase in front of you and, you, and you, you know the tradition that surrounds that and you know when you walk round to the right and you're going into that dressing room and you've watched the videos the Super Alley videos for yeah. instance I watched many times when I was younger and that like just, just that class and that quality about that just everything that goes along with walking into that dressing room, despite all these faces that are actually filling the dressing room. Yeah. It was, uh, it was real nerve-wracking. And what helped me was that we did have good Scottish uh, contingent there. You know, like, I, I walked in with, with Neil McCann, who, who, who I travelled with. Paul Ritchie yeah. had just signed at the same time as well, so we had kind of travelled through together. Uh, you had Dodgy was there. You had Barry Ferguson was there. Uh, Scott Wilson was there. Uh, guys that were of a similar age to me as well, Big Scotty and, and Fergie. Uh, so it was good. Craig Moore, again, he was an honorary Scot as well. He was at yeah. the club that long. So good guys who obviously helped a lot when you got there. But like you say, the names, I mean, the name, I, I go through the names. I've done, I've done a few days and I've done a few appearances and things. And see, trying to rack off the names that were in that dressing room. You yeah. must be leaving out for every time because every name was a, was a household name. You know, if yeah. you go for like the Dutch contingent, eh? Arthur, Ronald, Mikey, Fernando, Bert, uh, and then you go on to obviously George or Bert's, uh, Giovanni, I don't know if I mentioned Giovanni, that, that's how many it is, you forget you actually <laughs> named them. 
you've got two guys in Claudio Reynas and Sergio Perini's and Amoruso's. It's like the last of, Andrew Kinchelskis was there at the time. I'm watching him playing Premier League for Man United. You know, it's great. <laughs> in the same dressing room as them, you know, so it's uh, like the, the list was absolutely endless, but it was, uh, and then even the following, you were saying Kenija, but you remember watching <laughs> the World Cup, that right flank and everybody trying to bring him down in the final, you know, next minute, next, the next year you're in the dressing room with Kenija, <laughs> setting goals, on opening day of the season, I think I set one or two of his goals up against Aberdeen, we beat Aberdeen at Pataudry 3-0, and I had a, I'll say it was a cross, but it was a short term <laughs> cross. And uh, but found Kirija at the back post and he taps in, he put us two or three in a lap. So you're thinking this is like this is incredible, you know. But the last, like you say, the last endless, the, the quality of the footballer was absolutely phenomenal. And you know, it was a huge, huge part of my education as well and development. And I've been a fan, I've been a fan since I was a young boy, and walking in there meant a lot. Uh, I've always thought of myself, I've always wanted to win, no matter what I've been playing at, whether it be playing with my brother in the back garden or playing balls in, with, with my dad or playing tiddlywinks or cards. I yeah. want to win. So I felt I fitted in with that, with the kind of mentality. But you realise quickly that it's, it's up tenfold when you walk into that dressing room uh, and the expectations and the, the demands that are put on you are, you've never experienced anything like it, you know. So it was, but I, I loved it. I loved that demand. I loved being like, driven to be better. Uh, and they guys, all the guys that we've mentioned had a huge part because they were brilliant players, really, really, really good players and brilliant pros. And by the way, we mentioned all the foreigners, but the Scottish guys were, were huge, absolutely yeah. huge. I mean, we touched on them before. I mean, Barry Ferris, I think to this day, probably still one of the, is one of the best players I've played with. Absolutely, yeah. no doubt about that. Neil McCann was a wonderful winner, wonderful winner for a striker. To play with him in the team was, was unbelievable because you knew what he was doing. The wee man was going to get the ball at his feet, get it out and deliver. So yeah. you knew you hit that area and we had kind of developed a no bad wee understanding about, again, we travelled through together every day. So you start to have a bond between people and me and we, Terry, had a, quite a strong bond and that then went onto the pitch as well that I kind of understood how he was going to play and uh, he understood kind of what I wanted for him as well. So there was a good wee relationship there. So it was always good to play with him as well. Dodgy, international forward as well. So it was good to learn off him as well. Yeah. Uh, he obviously he came to Rangers kind of later in his career and even made that breakthrough, I think, in the Scotland team maybe a wee bit later in his career. But wonderful guy, wonderful player as well. So these Scottish guys, for me, really were crucial in, 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 in helping me settle in. And then, like you say, with all the, all the superstars that we had in the dressing room, you can only... That you cannot not learn off these guys. You're, yeah. you're crazy if you don't look at these guys and and take things from them. And it might be like like Mikey, Mikey Moles. You look at his play like that that turn he has, and it's done as a Moles turn. But I took it, I took it, and put it on. Uh, <laughs> I used that through through the years, and it's it's just you know it's you take these wee things for people's games, you take things for people's professionalisms and their daily habits and how they go about their business. So you could. You could only learn in that environment because these guys were top, top level. Is there a danger though for yourself? Obviously, you alluded to that you're a fan of the club and until you started kind of doing appearances, probably maybe your later spells at Rangers, we always, I certainly know, I always thought you were a Hibs fan, so you actually see you come out and say, no, I, I was a Rangers supporter. That was, that was pretty much, a, you know, it was a shock to us, but a good shock, obviously. But is there a chance though when you go in and you've mentioned the names that you're, in, you're on the training pitch with, that... You, you, you can't really allow yourself to be standing in all these players. You have to get in about it. You have to get show your worth. And I mean, you made a, a decent number of appearances that season that are testament to yourself and, and your mental ability that, that you believed you, you were on par with these guys and you believed you could go into that team and, and contribute. Listen, that, that, that's it. That is exactly it. Like, I've never been one for standing about. And that's probably one of the reasons that I left after kind of a year, after 14 months, and went on loan originally to Wolves, because, I, I, listen, I, I wouldn't say I was in awe. I was absolutely, total and utter respect to, the, to these players for because I yeah. played against them as well. I played against them all the year before, but I'd also done pretty well against against Rangers the year before. I scored three or four goals in the, in the games prior to the game. I remember bashing Amaruso all over Easter Road one night uh, on a Sunday night. In the game. So, you're coming in like, listen, full respect and... and Absolutely over the moon to be there, but ultimately I want to play. You know, I'm yeah. not here to 
I'm here just to train and, and here and, and be, a, be a bit part of playing. I wanted to play. And like you say, I made a lot of appearances that year and scored, scored a few goals. Uh, never scored as many as I would like. But it's, uh, it was about getting in there and, and making your mark. And that was it. Like if Mikey Moles and Tory Flo and Ronald DeBoer or Billy Dodds or Rod Wallace were going to be in front of it, well, it's up to my, it's my job to move them out of the way. Yeah. It's my job to move them out of the way and, and, and take that shot. And you know, and I've done it for spells. I've done it for long spells of that year. And I remember coming back the second season, pre season, and I came back. I, was, I made a real effort. Uh, I'd went away and I'd worked really, really hard over the close season on my body. I was still young, I was still a skinny kid. Yeah. Uh, worked a lot on fitness, which I've always kind of been naturally like pretty fit. But again, I worked hard in the close season. I worked hard in the gym on my upper, upper body to get stronger because you needed to be strong. So and Ammo, Ammo pointed that out to me straight away. Like you need to. I was right next to him in the locker room. You need to get your shoulders. You need to work <laughs> on your shoulders. I was asking, like, "Aye, right, Ammo." I went, I smashed you all over the place last year. So. <laughs> Stand next to him and stab you. You need to work on your shoulders. So. Uh, uh, but, but again, he's right, as younger players, you need to put that work in, you know. So I went away, I worked really hard, and I came back and I was flying pre season in the games and the training. And, and Dick actually says to me, he goes, At this moment, he spoke to me and says, At this moment, he felt I was a heady, you're the boars, I was a heady, your flows, because I just came back in a really good position. But that never really reflected in his team yeah. selections, which yeah. was uh, these are obviously things then, things then changed. But I'd say to you before, I'd we played the Aberdeen first game of the season and I was on the bench. Came off the bench, I think it was at 0-0 actually, at 0-0. And I, I'm sure, if I remember, I had a hand on all three goals. Yeah. We won three. Uh, but then I think the next week we had Hibs at home and I wasn't even in the match day squad, which I found that was quite frustrating because it made yeah. an impact. You know, I came off the bench, I'd done my job, I made the impact that, that I needed to make and I wasn't even in the match day squad. So... Things then led on, you know, the, the opportunity to come to Rules, uh, when it, to go to Rules on loan came up, and it was a really good opportunity. I never yeah. knew how good it was until it was there, to be honest with you. But uh, I'm somebody who's always been, if I'm not going to play, like, I don't care where I am or how much I love the place, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to stay there as a, a bit part player. Listen, I'm not going to knock the door and cause it straight away and say, that's yeah. me, I'm not playing, I'm off. That's not, I, that's not what I mean. But if it's becoming apparent that, I'm maybe not going to be involved, even involved in a match day squad. Then listen, that's clearly it's no going, it's no happening for you as a manager of the club, and it's no happening for me as a player. So, no, I never again at that moment I hadn't I hadn't been asking for any moves. It just the opportunity rose. We, we were away on an international trip, and my agent at the time, Gordon Smith, was actually on that trip, and uh, he came to me just as we were travelling back. I was away with the 21s at the time, and uh, he had says to me, look there's an opportunity that the club, I think, have agreed to let you go and loan to Wolves. So that's how it came about. It was prior yeah. to flying back from Belgium or something. And uh, he had says to me, so I went in to see Dick the next morning. And sure enough, I don't, to be honest, I don't think he knew too much about it. But he had says, listen, it's, it is completely your choice. If that's what you want to do, then, then, then we'll, we'll support that. So again, as a player, when you're told those kind of, in, in those terms, you know you're maybe no fully wanted or value as part of the squad so I thought you know what that's fine I'll go and try it it's a three month loan deal let's go and see if we can get some football and obviously it then turned into a, turned into a permanent but the disappointing thing about that year at Rangers was I did play a lot of games and experienced Champions League football for the first yeah. time which was great and after two minutes of your, on your Champions League debut at home in Monaco and what was a massive game but if yeah. we won that I think we were qualified and or two one up I scored the other day equalised and Mikey scored to put us 2-1 up, and then Ammo had a brainwave about dribbling <laughs> out of the back and the ball, and next minute the, the, the ball's through and the gap that he's left, and Simeone scored, I think, to make it 2-2. Uh, and that ultimately, that I think if we had, if we had won that, we would have qualified for the next stages. So some great experiences, but the disappointing thing is, with that group of players, with that talented group, we never won anything that year. You know, and that was a big, a big disappointment for me, because I've went there to, again, anything that... If, that I've talked about over the course of my career. I want to play my part in successful teams. I want to win. I want to look back and say, listen, I've, I've won a trophy or I've won a league. And that's what, that's what I'm about. So it was really disappointing that that never happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, really disappointing that we never won anything there. So I always felt I had unfinished business, to be honest, when yeah. I left. I always felt I would, I, would, I, was, I would find my way back, you know. And 
And I do that again, that was said in jest, but Alex and the police actually phoned me when I had signed for rules, because ultimately Alec sold me the day that he came in. Yeah. So it, a deal had been agreed with, with the club, uh, and, and the chairman, Mr Murray, had phoned me when the deal was agreed, and he says, listen, Kenny, that's, I know we've, we've agreed this deal, blah, blah, blah. He goes, but the managers, the new manager that's coming in might change your situation at the football club. And I went, all right. So I kind of knew, obviously, it was well reported that it was probably going to be Alex at that time. So I went, all right, listen, that's fine. That's, that's great. That might, it might give me the, I might get more opportunities considering Alex was the one that really gave me that breakthrough that season. And I, got a phone call. I got a phone call a couple of hours later saying, yeah, Kenny, that's fine. You can, you can go. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> oh, so well, Alex has obviously came in and went, well, three million, right? Get ready, I'm take it. Well, well, <laughs> so, um, uh, so that was that. But I got a phone call from him about two, three weeks later. I was actually down at Wolves over, uh, I think we were in preparation for that. We were away at Barnsley or Sanon again. And the phone went and it was Alex. And I went, ah, oh, Kenny, it's Alex here, uh, Gaffer. He says, Kenny, it's Gaffer, it's a Gaffer here. I went, hi, Gaffer, what's, uh, what's going on? He went, uh, listen, it was just, I never got a chance to speak to you and things and wish you all the best. Listen, there was offer there and we've got a lot of talent in that position, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it was fine. I went, no, no bother. Listen, it's worked out great. I've, I've enjoyed my time here, things. I went, but you'll be signing me back. You'll be signing me back at some point. And mm-hmm. I said that to him on the phone. Yes, but I, I did believe I would have had an unfinished business there and that I would eventually find my way back. How did you fit? Obviously, what number? Before uh, Alex came in, obviously, what member did It was the first time you'd kind of had a foreign coach as such. How did you find his methods on the training ground different? Obviously, with Dick has a, has a reputation of being a strict disciplinarian. So, yeah. how did you find his methods compared to what you'd been used to under Alex and uh, at Hibs? That's not, again, everybody's different. And again, when you're brought up in a certain culture and a certain style, you find that, the, the, that your, your methods, so maybe maybe Dick's methods will be kind of more tailored with how other co- other Dutch coaches work because yeah. maybe that's who he worked with. And it's the same when you t- to see, when you hear, when I hear Portuguese, t- but again, you can't bracket them all, you know, but having working with Pedro Cusino down there, when he came into range a few years later, like he seemed to have that kind of Portuguese kind of mindset, you yeah. know, but I really, enjoyed, I really enjoy working with Dick because again, that's one of the reasons I went there to work with, work with that level of coach and manager, yeah. like, to help me become better. Uh, and, and coaches are great. They, they play a huge part. And I think that maybe now there's the, probably a far bigger role to play. But for me, that it was great working with Dick and, 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 he, and his staff and Bert. And then he brought Jan Bouters in as well. It was yeah. really good working with him. But for me, I, I, learned, I learned so, so much off, off my teammates just by, just by playing and, and training with you guys every day. That I said before, like, just seeing how they go about their daily business, the, how, the, how the work that they put in, the sacrifices that they make, that's, that was where the, a huge learning curve for me was. But like I said, really, really enjoyed working with Dick. And he was strict. He was strict, but he did have his lighter side. Like he, always, he did like a wee laugh and a wee joke as well. And I was on the receiving end of a couple of wee things where I'm when I think after I scored five against St. Mirren, Monaco was that week. Yeah. So me being a young boy, just scored five goals, first hat-trick for Rangers. You're doing the press after, and so I'm, I'm high as a kite. We've got to say, oh, you think you think you'll keep your place? Ah, oh, I hope so. Blah 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 blah. The headline on the Sunday morning: Play me or I'm off. <laughs> on the Tuesday morning: Play me or I'm off. And I've woke up and I thought, Oh my God, what on earth is going on? So we were walking. It must have been the Tuesday or the Monday before the game. We played them on the Tuesday, I think Tuesday night against Monaco. So we're in the Crillon House at East Kilbride in the hotel. So I come down the Monday morning and I'm. Oh, I'm, I'm so anxious about going down the stairs and bumping into the gaffer. So we're walking down to our breakfast and just when we went into the room, there's a, in the wee corner of the room, Dick was just sitting on a chair as I was coming down. I was walking down trying to hide behind Neil McCann, <laughs> which wasn't hard by the way. It's hard when the wee man's tiny. <laughs> so uh, I'm walking down and I'm like, I just, I've got the rubber face on trying to just, just, not, just avoid eye, eye contact. And then wee Dick just goes, yeah, Miller, yeah, play me and I'm off, yeah. <laughs> No, Gaffer, that's not what it was. I never said that. He was, he was just laughing. You could tell. So he was actually, he was actually, like, he was actually howling, and he was obviously knew how things worked in that. But as a young player at that moment, I was like, "Oh, man, I'm going to get the wrath. I'm going to get the wrathy wee dick here when I get to the <laughs> But you know, fine. And sure enough, he done the right thing, and he played me. He played me anyway. All the way in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, you moved on to Rosie. You touched upon. It's a chance to play in the Premier League as well. Uh, obviously, Rosie. 
playing Premier League football as well. So how, how did you enjoy that and, and how did that work for your, your development? Because obviously it's really there that you, obviously the Rangers we knew and, and we seen you play for Rangers and the five goals you took before the goal against Monaco playing Champions League. But really going down there, you scored the goal against Man United, etc. That really kind of, I'd imagine, growing your game tenfold. Again, very similar to Rangers. We went down to Wolves and outside the Rangers, but right up there where Wolves was my best spell in my career. You know, yeah. I, I absolutely loved it there. I had some, I had five years there effectively. The first yeah. three, four months of home and then a four and a half year uh, permanent deal. So it was, uh, I absolutely loved my time at that football club. Made some really, really good friends. Guys I still speak to to this day, which again, sometimes is quite rare in football. You know, like you, you move on and you become new teammates and this and that, but still really good friends with a, a lot of the guys. We're a really tight knit group. Uh, and we had the first year over there had a bit of a, like the wheels came off towards the end of that season it got us promoted but the next year we got promoted to the Premier League we had a really good good blend of young really good young players and really top experienced players we signed Paul Ince and Dennis Irwin who came in and like again working with the guys was a massive island I mean I was 21 at the time when I went down to Wolves so I think when they guys came in I would have been 22 but we had Dolan Lescott who went on to play represent yeah. England, won the leagues with Man City, went to Everton. We had Lee Neller who went on to have a really good career as well. Keith Andrews had a really good, good, a good core of young players who, when they guys came in, like these boys have been the top of the tree. Like in say Man City, uh, sorry, Man U, Liverpool, Inter Milan. Uh, he came to us, he came to us from Middlesbrough. Then Dennis Irwin, what was it, 12, 15 years at Man United? Man United. Man United. All, the, all these leagues, all these trophies, all these experiences, international footballers, like they were massive signings for us. And as young players, again, you look at them thinking, that's Paul Ince, that, that's Dennis Sullivan. Like, I remember watching these guys on the TV and thinking how good a, a footballer they are. Now you're playing alongside them. And they were a massive influence on the, on the team when they came in. And again, we were a good group. We had some really good players in that team. Colin Cameron for Hearts was down there in the midfield. And beside Ince, we had two wingers and Sean Newton and Mark Kennedy who were really, really good players. That I touched said before, Joel and Lescott and, and Lee Nail was a left side there defence along with Paul Butler and Dennis Irwin. So we yeah. had, we, and there was Elf and Nathan Blake or George and Da up front. So we were strong. We were a strong, strong team. But we just kind of failed to go over the line. And I think with the guys coming in, I think it gave us that extra... I think it gave us that extra bit of experience, bit of yeah. quality, and, and, and that winning mentality that, that got us over the line that year. And it was through the playoffs, and I'll tell you, a wonderful day. What a day it was, going to, going to the Millennium and getting promoted in front of 75, 80,000. It was first time the club's in the top, back to the, in the Premier League, back in the top flight after I think it was 21 years and X amount of days and hours and minutes. They had it done at the seconds, actually, behind the goal. <laughs> How long have it since I were in the top flight? So what a day. Great experiences. And like you say, it gave you the opportunity to go and play in the Premier League. And it was a disappointing year for me, to be honest with you. Being in and out of the team, we eventually got relegated. Uh, but like you say, the highlights, scoring a winner against Man United. But at that moment, it was top me bottom, which was an incredible day at Molyneux that day. And followed that up three days later with our last minute equaliser against Liverpool at Molyneux as well. So it was a good four days. Best four days of that season, to be honest with you. But... Uh, uh, Loved the time. Worked with Glenn Hoddle as well as a as a man. He came in run about that. I think we had started the next season. He came in uh, once we had been relegated. It was uh, well, what a great experience to work with him as a as a coach and a manager as well. Obviously, between two thousand and six two thousand seven, you took a year out of football and you never played any games <laughs> at all. You never scored any goals at all. I've checked yeah. somewhere online, mate, and I cannot find a That's single kind of anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you later moved on to Derby. <laughs> yeah. How did you enjoy your spell at Derby? Because Derby at that time obviously had they were they were struggling bits in, in the yeah. Premier League, you know, and it was a hard time for the club. You were obviously arriving kind of decent name, you had, had were in decent form. Yeah. So how, how how did you find it doing that? That's you know, out with the obvious, I really, really enjoyed my time at Derby. Uh, yeah. It's a fantastic football club, it really is. And it was a real tough year. And you know, see, going into the year, I knew it was going to be a tough year. I, I really did. Uh, but I knew of Billy Davis, obviously, uh, who had a reputation as a really, really good coach and a manager. Uh, yeah. spoke to him, I spoke to him uh, kind of prior to going down there and 
his passion and everything the signs through when you speak to Billy, you know, about how he wants to play, about how he goes about his job. I knew Stephen Pearson had went down there as well. He had went down there six months, scored the winning goal in the playoff final. So I spoke to Big Piro and, and I was asking him about it. And, and again, he could say nothing but good things about the football club, about the people and obviously about Billy as well. So I was like, well, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity again to have a crack at the, the Premier League. And uh, with, with a fantastic football club, really, really big club as well. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. Because also, again, this, there, was not, again there was nothing on record. There was never any discussion about Rangers at this time. But I, always, I thought if I've ever, and Walter had obviously came back in. Walter yeah. and Ali were now at, at Ibrox. So I'd always thought that if there was ever going to be a time, it, it would have been under them. So particularly, like you say, with that year that I never had, it was, uh, it was always going to be tough, you know. It was always going to be tough, which is, and I fully appreciate that and I knew that. But I always thought if it was going to be anybody, it would have been that man that would have been able to do it. And again, I hadn't, I hadn't spoke to him at all, but I thought, you know, if there's going to be a chance, then I maybe need to, and plus, leaving there as well, leaving Celtic, was the same situation. It was the yeah. same situation. I was told, I was surplus to requirements, you know, that's how I felt. So the opportunity to go and play, like I said, Billy, Billy does the sales pitch and he makes you feel wanted that you're going to be part of something. And so I thought, no, I want to be part of that, you know. So I went down and again, things got off to a fly. You score, your, you score on your debut against Newcastle on Monday Night Football. Yeah. Uh, probably a, a fair, probably the furthest out I've ever scored for you as well. <laughs> so thank you, oh, this is great. And by the way, the fans in that game, oh, unbelievable. But Right throughout the season, through all the troubled times, the fans were absolutely outstanding. There were 30,000 every single home game, whether the result you were winning or drawing or you were getting beat 3-0. They were so vocal and so supportive. Like They were absolutely outstanding. You know what? It was a tough year, but they made it, they made it that a little bit easier by not being... Like, you know how fans are. You're doing the bottom and sometimes things can turn and the crowds yeah. are no... But, but they never got like that, you know, they never got like that. So they, they, they made it that, as much as it was really tough, they made it that a little bit easier and everybody in the Fat Football Club was good. So I, listen, like I said, out with the obvious, I, I really enjoyed that year uh, at that football club. Uh, fantastic facilities, really good stadium, good training and good people uh, and enjoyed it. But around about Christmas time of that year, that's when chat did kind of start about maybe coming back to Ibrox and it was not able to happen in the January because I'd represented two clubs in that year. Yeah. So if it was going to happen, we were going to need to put it on hold until uh, until the January. And again, there wasn't even any official talk. Like I never spoke to Walter, I hadn't spoke to Ali. It was just start, there was kind of words on the street that there might be a chance. And then sure enough, obviously towards the end of the season, uh, chats were there. Obviously I managed to get a deal done with the club and, and I managed to get, get the move that I always felt was going to happen at some point in my career, but at the, that moment, at 28, I think I was, I was ready to come back in and no be the bit part player and no yeah. be the guy that might have to take the jersey. I felt I was ready to come back in the guy and have the jersey, and I was the guy that somebody was going to need to take it off. And uh, well, listen, we kept come back and the success was great over the three years. Were your performances for Scotland at that time? The performance for Scotland were at a level that. Every Rangers fan would probably welcome you back with open arms. The Celtic year obviously happened, and I think the majority of Rangers fans still did welcome you back because, for myself, we we had Chris Boyd and Boyd. Tell Boydie. the truth now. Tell the truth now about yourself. <laughs> Boyd, Boydie, well, I'll tell the truth about myself, but Boydie, in my opinion, was for 18 yards inside that 18 yard box. There wasn't anybody else you wanted to block the ball with. But Boydie outside the 18 yard box, well, you know, Walter left the boot some of the bigger games for that for that reason because he's worked right maybe wasn't he the, the greatest. For you coming back in and you asked me to be truthful, as a supporter, I, the away shirt that year I had Miller 18 on the back of it, right? Because Kenny Miller and me coming in would complement Chris Boyd tenfold and you would have a strike partnership there that would be a dream really. And it turned out to be that to be that case. Now I tain a lot of stick for it <laughs> for the fact that I had Kenny Miller in the back of my shirt, but you know your stuff. That's it. You know your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you've got to look at you've got to look at Rangers and think, well, how can Kenny Miller better the Rangers team of that year? And you, you did easily. You did. You seen that with the goals return. I mean, you only go to the, the game at Parkhead when he scored the first two goals back at the club. That that was a, that was a tremendous day to be Rangers. Sport. No, listen again. It was 
it was one of these things that the opportunity, like you say, that like my, my Scotland form had been pretty good. And again, all Premier, it probably kicked off when Walter took over as, yeah. the, as the Scotland manager. Like he, he come in and he just, he gives you this kind of belief and this confidence in yourself and, 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 and elevates your game to another level. And you know, that's what all top coaches and top managers do. They make people better. They get them maybe playing at a level that the, that the member never even knew they had. And Walter done that for me. Having Ali and Tommy beside them as well was, I think they were actually the dream, the dream staff for, yeah. for Walter. They two together were just phenomenal and they kept the lads bubbly. By the way, still very good at what they've done as well and passionate about winning and being successful. Obviously, you don't play with the clubs that they've played at if you don't have that. And, uh, but they were great for Walter because they, they kept the boys right and, and Walter then come in and done his bit. So, like you say, my Scotland form was really, really good. Over that, over that period and it kind of maintained as well once Walter had came back to Rangers and under Alex as well so the opportunity to come back again for me under that man like I always felt that any doubters or any questions that were going to be asked about that it's him that's making the decision you know like yeah. it's him that's in that call and, and, and for the standing that he's got within the Rangers uh, his support size I always thought they would have trusted him you know and, and I knew I could come back and contribute I knew I could and like you say I, I knew Boyd I was working on with in, in the Scotland team that's if that was my first uh, first interaction with Big Boyd he was away in international training. I mean Big Boyd he clicked straight away we're still mates this day we speak every other day so yeah. we, we clicked straight away and, and I knew that my game would complement his but I also knew that his would complement mine like or they kind of, kind of really moulded pretty, pretty well together. So I knew it would be a successful uh, partnership. And then when you look at the guys that we had behind us to, like, to support us and, and serve us with opportunities and that the footballers we had there, like, it's no I mean, listen, that, I, that was a, the most enjoyable spell in my whole career was, it was at that, that three years. It was absolutely, we were winning leagues, but see the pressure of having to win a league or defend a league or yeah. win a cup, like, just loved it, you know. I loved having that that demand and that pressure put on you. And I know that doesn't go for everybody, but at that club, you need to have that. You yeah. need to have, or you need to have the majority of guys in your dressing room that have got that to allow you to deal with everything that comes along with being a Rangers player. So I loved it, and like you say, you can say it now, and it's easy to look back. I mean, we won the three leagues each league each year. We won a cup, you know. So it was a real successful spell. So. I loved it, and, and to come and back, back like I said, I always felt I had an unfinished business. So to come and win that league, it was it was really it was really important for me. But like you say, that day, that day at Celtic Park, the, the four two, I felt that was if there's ever going to be a game that was going to uh, get you back in the in, in the Rangers supporters kind of hearts, it was it was that game, you know. And, and any kind of forgiveness might have might have went away after that game. So. It was uh, what a day, what a performance to go there and win in that manner was uh, was incredible. I also felt that unluckily that you, you couldn't come back in the, the January previous because obviously with the European run we had that year and the way that Walter played, or the way Walter set up, and you, you at the, the kind of leading for the front, I think it might have had a different outcome in Manchester, you know, with big uh, Kuzan suspended. So again, it's probably the regret that we couldn't have, we could, you couldn't have came back right. earlier. Of course, it was, I mean, it's, it's, it's disappointing that you weren't part of that because I was following it, I was following it all the way. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it was, again, and we were up against an incredible Zenit team, to be honest with you, in the final. Uh, I mean, you were always going to be up against it, but they were the games that you faced right the way through the competition, you know, you were yeah. playing against top level opposition that were always going to put you on the back foot. But that suited that team, you know, like even even the following year or the year after when we were in the Champions League, we went down to... Old Trafford, like it's back to the wall stuff. I was on an <laughs> island up there. I'm, I'm surrounded by Ferdinand and Chris Small and, and other like, like top top defenders and the ball's coming up to you. And there's not a right blue jersey within 40 yards of you. So <laughs> we were set so, in Europe, we were set up to be successful in the games, you know, and yeah. watching that that campaign, that UEFA Cup campaign, like it was hard work. When you speak when you hear the boys speak about it now, when you see some of the pictures, the boys are out on their feet. Yeah. Absolutely out on their feet. But they've put the work in, they've put in and they got the rewards in their games, you know, and they gave for sale a value. And listen to me, Ali. Ali talked about it the other week there. He's, he's done his wee Instagram he's post on, uh, on it. It was brilliant. It was yeah, brilliant listening to it. We've got a clean sheet here, and, uh, and then we've got a clean sheet there. And, <laughs> and we, we never scored, but we still got through. <laughs> 
it's, it's incredible story, you know, like to, to, to go through to play the level of opposition that you were playing and nobody can see that. Because I don't care how good a defence you are or how good Alan McGregor actually was in goal in some of these games. You're, you're still you're still playing against top players who can finish and who can yeah. score and who can create. So it was absolutely incredible that that team managed to get the clean sheets that they did, despite having one of the best tactically in Walton setting yeah. you up and preparing for it. You still need to do it, but you've still also got the opposition trying to break that down. You know, so it was a phenomenal achievement to actually get to the final in the first place. And like you say, when you get to that final, anything can happen. But when you concede. And uh, and and those types of games, and you're playing that way. It's always hard, but then transition it, you know, and get back. Yeah. But it was a fantastic achievement, a great camp. And again, it's a day, obviously, Rangers fans will remember forever. That year, when you come back, we obviously you're looking to get the win the league, and we won the Scottish Cup. The league kind of sewn up the last eight to Anadice. Uh, a tremendous performance, and and Kerry Lafferty had seen to come to the floor, and every time we needed to actually get over the line, um, and then the Scottish Cup final. Chris Boyd's famous, it's too hot for football line. Walter Smith hooking him off and Nacho scored an absolute yeah. world. He, he, he won the cup, what are your memories of that season? It was, it was a tight season. A real tight season. Uh, Post-split fixtures, seven points back. Yeah. So, again, because all the questions are arising now, or could you catch, could you no catch, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Well, listen, it's highly unlikely. You know, but at that moment, I'm sure we were four or seven points back at some point. Because I remember the, the old firm game at Ibrox, the Steve Davis goal. Yeah. And we needed to win that. There was no other result done us that day other than three points to have any opportunity to win in the league. And sure enough, we, we got the win and it got us back. It got, it got us back in striking distance. And then I think they dropped. I think they maybe drew against someone and we won. So all of a sudden, we were when we're back in the hunt. But what I do still remember as well was the, the Aberdeen game at uh, Ibrox that we played, I think it was 2-1. Yeah. Finished. We were go it was that close that year, after, at that moment, that it might have went to goal difference. Because yeah. I, remember going into that, I remember going into the game and thinking, we probably need to go and win maybe 4-0 here. Yeah. And we're playing Aberdeen, which obviously everything goes along with that rivalry. The game's never easy. So I was thinking, we need to win 4-0 here. And I believe, listen, I believe we could do it. I believe we can yeah. do it. So obviously it's nil nil where now or whatever it was born and then we get the goal, then we get the next goal, or two and all think, right, we can do this. And obviously they got a man sent off early as well. But then Big Boogie, Big Boogie got sent off as well. Aye. So it leveled things. So but we got on top of it and we thought, hey, we could go here. If we can get another one and it gets us to three, then we've got a wee chance to maybe getting this goal difference back on track as well. So sure enough though we, we conceded and finished two one. So it wasn't the result we wanted. We got the wins, which is the most important, but we'd have liked to have won by a few more goals just to maybe ease that gap a little bit. But anyway, as the rest of history, obviously, I think uh, Celtic drew it Easter Road, as did we. I think yeah, we drew it as well. Yeah. Uh, but then it all, it all came to the last day that we were ahead, and as long as we won, it was, it was league over. So 2 0 up, uh, big laugh. Pedro Shin, in fact, laugh shins one in, Pedro shins one in, and then Boydie shins one in on the cut back <laughs> right after that time. We put us three and a lot. So at that point, we were, uh, you're, you're, it's, I mean, when you get one and a lot, it's, it's fine. You get two and a lot in, in, in your Rangers, you're looking to really kind of go for the jugular at that point. And then when you get to the third right after half time, we kind of knew that was it. It was about just kind of seeing the game out, managing the game properly. And, and that was it. The league done all that hard work and, and blood, sweat, and tears over the course of the year. It's, it pays off. And like I said, there's, there's absolutely no better feeling. That, that's what it's about. You go at the start of the season, you want to win that league. And when you get it and you get over the line, and in these circumstances, in the last days, it's, it's not, there's nothing better. Also, the following year, it was near as close, but we got, we got back into the Champions League. We won the league pretty comfortably. I think we won it with three yeah. games to go or something like that off the Easter Road. Uh, and, and who can forget the, the League Cup final where the, the pigeon helps in the re assist and, yeah. and you get the goal for the nine, the nine men? Specifically that yeah. final, what, what are your memories of that day? Because going down to nine men, obviously we're expected to win it, but against the man, we're expected to win it. We go down to nine men and Walter makes his, his appearance at the, at the touchline rather than the technical area at, at Hamden. How, how is that in, on the park as a player? knowing? Because I mean, I think you played about four different positions that day. And then popped up. The it was all, I, don't, I, don't, I think there was new positions in many that day. <laughs> Playing positions, you were just you were just filling gaps. I think they actually you, you 
or a defender and an attacker. That was it. You weren't <laughs> in a position, you were just a defender and an attacker. But uh, that, like, see, see, like you say, you go into a cup final and you're a, you're a Rangers player or a Celtic player for that matter, that unless it's against each other, yeah. you're going to be favourite. But even when you're playing against each other, in the eyes of your fans, you're the favourites and you have Aye. to win. So there's always that pressure. But when you're playing, for instance, the Falkirk in the Scottish Cup and, and St Mirren in the League Cup, you're going in as overwhelming favourites. But let me tell you, like we, we never had any easy game in any cup final or semi-final when you're playing against these so-called lesser teams. The games were tough. I mean, if anything, I thought Falkirk were the better team than us on that day. But you yeah. heard them play brilliant brandy football. Uh, St Mirren, again, different team to what Falkirk were. But I felt they were. They maybe had the upper hand on us. I remember the half-time of that game. I was fucking going off my head. Yeah. Was going this, this is we, 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 if we don't get our finger out here, obviously well, I think we were down to ten men at half time as well, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Tomo, so we're down to ten men. I'm like, if we don't get we're going to lose this cup, you know. This is and it, there was actually talk at this moment about treble talk, you know, because we're playing Dundee United and and uh, I think I don't know if we just lost it or if it was a week after. It might have been the week before actually, because there'd been treble talk. There was. It was a week. Yeah. We went in a replay against Dundee United because we were three one up at. Or three one up at Ibrox and conceded two late goals. Yeah, uh, and we got it was a three three draw. We went up to Tannadice and got beat with a, a it was a lucky goal. I think it was it beat us that day. So we went to treble top to half time of this game. We're getting we've done it ten men here. So uh, now we're on top of that. We, we, this 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 might be gone, you know. So Walter comes in. Oh, he he tells me yes, sh- shut the f up, sit down, <laughs> listen to him. I sat down. That's me. I'll just listen to the, I'll listen to the main man. And uh, and, he, and he goes through he goes through his, his piece and, and says his piece and we go out and it really had a right response because Danny got sent off probably ten uh-huh. minutes later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're, uh, we're, we're, we're absolutely all hands on deck and like you say, Walter then he makes his appearance and, and comes down and pretty much kicks every ball. Uh, but at that moment, I think again, Ali will tell the story where he allowed Walter had allowed Ali and Kenny to kind of take the. The team in the in, in the league cup campaign, and at that moment, Walter just had to get down, throw the elbows out, and, and take charge. He was, uh, <laughs> he was he was on the touchline. He was kicking every ball, but we, we made our substitutions because uh, we needed to just for fresh legs. Uh, and it was like there was actually I remember Walter said he, he shouted me across at one point. He says, "Right, you need to go and fill in here now." I went right there, Walter, and then then next minute another information comes on. He says, "Right, we've changed it now, so you go back up top and we'll fill in." <laughs> If you, look at, if you look at the way the game went, you were, you were literally, if you needed to get back, you needed to get back. And and, and on the goal in particular, like, the kind of break, and obviously Big Davy steps out, he feeds Nasey. And the fact that we were down to nine men, for me, worked negatively for St Mirren, because I think they thought, we can win this. You know, we can actually beat them and win this cup. So we're going to, we're going to come for you. We're going to commit bodies forward, because when we're breaking, and it's the 3v3, and... It was never, we were never in a scenario like that the whole game. If we were, if we were 11 v 11, we would never have been left with that kind of scenario because they would have been a wee bit more cautious, probably defending. But I think they, they smelled blood, and rightly so. We're down to nine men and we were absolutely out on our feet. So they they committed a lot of bodies forward. And then, sure enough, we, we ended up beating. Maisie must have travelled 50 yards unchallenged with that ball. Yeah. That, that's how, because they were having to back off and back off because they had nobody back there that they could have committed there. It to close and nasey down. So when he gets to that kind of corner of the box, eight, eight, 20 yards for the, for the goal area, and he's got, he can just pick his cross, you know, and he picks across. There's me and Nacho are in kind of centre box, back of the box, kind of waiting on it, and I'm in between two defenders, three. Right. And I get, listen, that's a free header, but I still think you're looking at it. Probably the best header. It's probably one of the best goals I've ever scored because it's you're still 14, 15 yards out and you're having to generate a bit of power and get the direction. And I genuinely believe it's probably if it goes anywhere else, it gets saved. Yeah. You know, it gets saved. It, it drops and bounces at the right moment. And luckily enough, found it's just way into the corner. I was uh, I was at Hamden that day and it was one of the best because of the main men, because of the you oh. could sense you could sense you could feel the knives getting sharpened. You know what I mean? You could sense it coming oh. in. It was, it was it was treble talk to all of a sudden now we're only we've only got the league in the last month of the season, six weeks of the season, and it would have been listen, we would have won the league that year, there's no doubt about it, no matter what. But it would have felt like a failure. It would have yeah. felt like a failure going into the going into the, the end of the season just with the league. So uh, when that again, see when I watched that day, I remember like seeing the ball drop into the goal, 
and then just going right to the fans. And I remember just grabbing the gate, like the yeah. gate, I'm <laughs> shaking it, and the fans are just right there. And you know, I still, I can still feel what I was feeling at that moment. And you can see my, I was out of breath. That's <laughs> like David there and these, I was actually out of breath because you're just screaming. And like, again, it was a relief more than anything else. You know, because yeah. again, they keep a lot of players when they're, they go into big games, whether it be derbies or cup finals or, or Champions League. Like, see, when you come out of it and you've actually won, when you're expected to win, yeah. that's that demands put on you. And you, you are massive favourites and you're expected to win. See, when you get over the line, listen, the celebrations are great, but there is that sense of relief as well. You know what? We've done it. We've yeah. done it. It's because it's just another trophy to add to the list. You know, it's been done many a time before, but we've now played a small part in the history uh, yeah. in what Rangers Club is. Moving on to your next season, it sadly it turned out to be that you left in, in the January. Um, what was it, 25, 30 goals before Christmas that year? Yeah, yeah unbelievable. 20, 21 goals, I and I've got the wee Champs League goal as well. Unbelievable form. When did you find out yeah. that, that the club were going to be letting you go? And obviously, how did you feel at that time? Because you, you were at the top of your, your game, or in my opinion, you were at the top of your game at that time. Yeah, I was, I was, we spoke at the start of that season, actually, Walter had spoke to me, but obviously as players, you, all you'd focus on is playing and training. Like, that's what you focus on and you, you, you don't really get too much info about what's going on behind the scenes and what have you. But Walter had came to me at the start of that season, we were going to Australia pre-season. So we were yeah. on our layover, we were in Dubai actually, on the way out to Sydney. And uh, Walter had uh, spoke to me in the lounge, he says, look, I'm going to get you another, like, an extension, maybe another couple of years. Uh, I went brilliant. He went, uh, I'll, I'll try and get you the same deal. I'll try and get you the same deal as you're on at the moment. Uh, he goes, but I don't, I, I can't even promise it. So I, obviously, maybe he knew there was maybe things going on. I don't Aye. know. I don't know by any means, but how it went anyway, we, we never really spoke again in maybe till about October time. And he came to me and says, Look, we've got, I've got you the contract. So at this point, obviously, I don't know, say October time, I was sitting on. 12 goals and 12 league goals probably in the first 10 games or whatever. So I was like, right, okay, uh, let's just, just get uh, Martin or Andrew or whoever it is to go and speak to my agent and we'll try and sort it out. So contract was put on the table. At this moment in football, there was already teams contacting us about you're a free, you're a free, you're a free agent at the end of the year. In January, you can actually speak to these teams. So... Teams had started to get in touch. So we knew there was going to be interest in options if, if it never went, if we couldn't sort this out. So what had happened was it, was it was literally one day the contract was offered. Like, so it went through to my agent. So yeah. he went through to check it all out and for us to have a look at it and look at it. And then later on that afternoon, I don't know if it was Andrew or Martin or, or I got in touch with Dave through, I think it was through email, basically saying that that contract couldn't be an offer. Because well, for whatever reason, so yeah. and it was a significant, it was a significant amount less than, than what than the contract I was already on. So my agent called me and goes, "Can you have taken that contract off straight away?" And to be honest, it was it was pretty much bang on. I think it was about a forty percent pay cut. Yeah. So I was like, right, okay, uh, and it literally went for there. And we just never understood why. There was never really any, any explanation why. So. It kind of got put in the back burner, to be honest with you. Nothing really, nothing changed over that next couple of months. Me now, looking back on it, maybe it was because of what happened. Yeah. Actually, what happened the year before, like, sorry, the year after. Like, yeah. everything over at the fan of the, the next year, and maybe that was reasons why they couldn't commit to long-term contracts on, on bigger amounts of money. So, anyway, nothing really happened. But then, as you build into January, the, op the options started to become clearer about what yeah. you can potentially do. I was, I'd just turned 31 at the time. I didn't want to leave. I genuinely wanted to finish the season off and end up with 40 goals, which, yeah. which I would have. The way that that team was playing and how, how well we were playing that year uh, and the system as well, it suited me. Uh, Yeller had came in as well. Yeah. He was a yeah. big help as well. Fantastic footballer. Real good foil to play up front with as well. Uh, so I, I wanted to stay, finish the league off. Obviously, they won the League Cup that year as well. Uh, finish the season off and end up with league, another league, a league medal, a league cup winners medal, and uh, and four goals under my belt, and then then look at what was going to be on the table. But sometimes in football you need to make decisions, you know. And there was good options on there at the time. A move actually fell through uh, on the day I was supposed to be flying out to Fiorentina. Yeah. I was I was 
if we go on there, originally, and it fell through uh, for reasons we'll not get into. And, uh, <laughs> and then there was, still, uh, there was other options there in regards to going to play for Big Alex again at Birmingham, which is ironic enough. <laughs> uh, and obviously the, the Turkish move. So, listen, I wanted to try something different. Listen, it never worked. I never worked out. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. I really did. But it was really tough for the family. The football was great. The fans were so, so passionate. It was really good to play in that, at that for that six months. But it was going to be really tough for the family. So, obviously, we needed to look at look at ways out. I did speak to Ali on a number of occasions about trying to come back. Uh, it never quite materialised just until it was too late yeah. uh, to come back at that moment. But, obviously, like I say, that's everything's ever enhanced for a reason. And, we just couldn't we just couldn't get it done at that moment, so I had to wait a couple of years before it actually happened. Obviously, you end up at Cardiff before you end up back at Rangers. When did you first hear the, the kind of talk? And I suppose it was pretty much constant talk because we can always remember as fans of Kenny Miller, Razor looking at Kenny Miller, Razor looking at Kenny Miller when Ali was in charge and we'd obviously went to the, to the bottom leagues. But when did it really come to your attention that no, actually, I'm going back to Rangers? Well, like I said, I mean, I, I, I've become quite close with Ali and Kenny uh, through my time there. Uh, so I would, I would be speaking with Ali every and over, and they were good enough on the closed season of the MLS to allow me to come into Murray Park and train in the yeah. closed season. So I was always in dialogue with them, and it just seemed like every time a transfer window came about, actually over that two-year period, that it was the noises were there. And if I'm honest, I was talking to Ali about it. I was. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it straight away. But for some reason, it just never, it never materialised the way I wanted to. Like I spoke with Ali, and it would, it would maybe go quiet for a few months or whatever. And then, so anyway, it went, like I say this was, this was pretty much a constant. Like I said, every time a transfer window was there, there was a, there was a bit yeah. of chat because both, not only did I come in and train in the close season, uh, the following close season, I just had a wee clean up on my knee on my patella tendon. So Stevie Walker. Uh, done my rehab for me, brilliant physio, obviously a guy who's known me for a long, long time, so he knows my body inside out, and, and Ali, Ali and the club were good enough to let me come back in and use Stevie on a rehab on a rehab basis, so it was great coming in and seeing the boys, watching the training, I'd be doing the rehab, watching the boys and things, and obviously watching the journey uh, back through back through the leagues, and it was actually, that was that December, I was in doing my rehab, and it was then the May, that came, it really came to fruition. So we spoke probably around about, my mate was now manager in Vancouver, who, who's actually my manager now, Carol Robinson. Yeah. He had yeah. taken over in Vancouver. Uh, so he was a the manager there now. And it got to about April time, and I think we pretty much agreed. Well, <laughs> me and Ali had agreed, but I don't think <laughs> Ali had agreed. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a problem. So, I spoke to I'd spoke to Robo and I says, look, there's a chance to go back again. It tied in really well because the little one, uh, my, my oldest, was just starting school, so to come back and and obviously get the chance to come back to Rangers or in the championship at the time, obviously. And uh, I'm, I'm on this. Oh, oh, doesn't matter. So uh, I had the chance to come in. The little one was starting school and it tied in really well. So I said, me and Ali had agreed and. I spoke to Robbo and says, look, I've got a chance to go back, mate. Uh, I'd only had the contract, was only a couple of months left anyway, but I was speaking, yeah. can we just cut it? Can we just cut it uh, short so I can go away, have maybe three, four week break, and then go and kick on into the, into the season with Rangers, rather than staying up until the end of the contract, then I probably would have had to go straight back into training yeah. with the Rangers for the next or full season, rather than having the break. So he was brand new, he helped me out big time. Uh, we sorted that, and then sure enough, I came back, that was me. Uh, came back and as it turned out, Ali hadn't he cleared it with <laughs> hadn't he cleared it with the club. So I was I've just cancelled my contract and then got me and Ali had kind of come to an agreement. But then I think was it Graham Wallace? Was that was that would that be right? He was I think he was, uh, was like a revolving door that time came in, I'm not sure. Oh, was <laughs> and again that was Graham must have spoken to my agent and my agent was like he's not agreed this, you know, he's not agreed to what's been agreed. So anyway, we had to go through a whole new negotiation. Listen, we got it done eventually. And listen, I just wanted to get it done. So there wasn't a lot of negotiation on my part. It was a case of just going to just put the contract down, you know, so we can sign yeah. and get back. Get... So we've done that and like you say, you got back and disappointing year, real disappointing yeah. year. Uh, really disappointing on a few levels for me, to be honest with you, because uh, the club that I had left, it wasn't, that wasn't the environment that I was coming into. And it was, again, there's been a lot of talk about that. And thankfully, we seem to be getting back to some 
close level to where we were at before. Uh, but it was hard. It was really hard coming back into that where it wasn't quite the same standards and, and drive for, for players that had, had experienced in the previous two spells, you know. And I felt for Ali a bit because he was still dealing with all kinds of stuff off the field. And like you say, it was... It was there was like a revolving door at the front of the Ibrox at that moment in time, so it was it was tough times. It was, it was hard, real tough season. Obviously, Ali then left, and then Kenny took over, and Kenny then left, and Stuart McCall comes in to see the season out, which again Stuart came in and he stayed with the ship, which in were real tough circumstances. He done he done great, uh, or oh, ended off with a horrific playoff double yeah. header against Miller, uh, which again you'd rather forget. And, if you're not searching that, you would rather know if can find the answer to that as well. So, <laughs> but again, listen, that's football. I think that, that the end of that season for me typified how the rest of the season had been going. You know, I mean, see if you were to say Glasgow Rangers finished third in the second tier of Scottish no. football. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't no. believe it, but we did. We finished behind Hearts and Hibs. And again, that for me, it was just it's just no what I've known, you know, it's no what it's no what this club's been built on and, and it's no what it, it wants to be known for, you know, and it was tough. It was a real tough year. But like I say there's a lot of things going on surrounding the whole club that was, was tough as well. But it was uh, we moved into the next year and obviously Mark Warburton came in and Davy and uh, straight away I knew things were going to be it was going to be a positive season. Just the yeah. the, 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 the language, the the kind of talk, the work that we were doing was uh, was really, really good. I really enjoyed it, responded to it. We obviously brought some really good players in as well, but it was a huge rebuild. A huge rebuild was required because I think of the disastrous season before. And all these players that were at the contract would just let go. You know they only had about nine players, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 my younger boys as well. I mean, you think of Barry McKay's and, and Lewis. In fact, Lewis McLeod had just went. He had just went, but Barry McKay was still a young boy there. I mean, I think there was me, Lee Wallace, I think Dean Seals was still part of it, Nicky Law was still part of it. Uh, who else? There wasn't many. There wasn't no, many. There was, there was uh, many. McGregor, Darren McGregor was still there, but then he then left. Uh-huh. Uh, so it was, it was a huge rebuild. If you look at the boys all okay, came in, your Andy Halliday's, your Jason Holtz, your Martin Wackhorns, your James Taverners, Rob Kiernan's. These, these guys came in and, and obviously we then got Dominic Ball and Gary on loan as well. We had good loan deals that came in, but young boys. Yeah. Young boys that were untried and untested. And, you know, like, again, even, even, even that for me, I was thinking, you know, this, like, these younger players, and by the way, they were brilliant for us and really good boys and good players with good abilities. I was still thinking Nathan Dewar came in as well. And, you know, and I was being, again, one of the older guys in the, well, the oldest guy probably in the team. <laughs> I was us on a higher level, you know, and like you needed to earn that right to come to, to, to Rangers and you needed to have done something to like to, to prove that you could come and handle this. And these guys were getting the opportunity to come here on loan and they, they know a lot of first team experience. And so even that told us kind of where we were at yeah. actually as a football club and, and trying to recruit players, you know, and we had to do that. And and Mark done an incredible job of assembling the squad to to go and play the way we did. And also go and, and, and achieve what ultimately the, 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 the goal was. We need to get back. We need to get promoted. We need to get promoted well. We need to show that we are too good for this. And, and we did. It was a good, a good level of competition for us that year. We were a good team, really good team. Uh, but we came out on top and it did end up comfortable. We actually had a really poor end of the year, to be honest with yeah. you. And we won in games. I don't think we won a game since the Peterhead uh, uh, Petrofac Cup final, obviously we beat Celtic in the semi, but that was on penalties. Yeah. You know, so in terms of actually winning a game, I think we went about four or five games without winning a game. There was a lot of draws towards the end of that season, which was disappointing. I mean, then that led to the, the obviously the cup final, which, listen, see had Matt Warburton and his, that team won that cup final. Like, you look at it now, we're as a football club now, nine years without any major trophy. Yeah. You know, and that's the closest we've came. That's as close as we came. Again, the cup final this year was was incredible, incredibly unlucky. The, the league cup final against Celtic. I mean, there's no doubt we were the better team that day, and uh, we deserved to win. But yeah. by the way, we never. That's the whole thing. We never. So, if you talk, I talk about I talk about the Rangers team that I was in 2008 to 2011, and particularly the, the nine men cup cup final that we found a way to win that day, you know? Yeah. Like, nine men, yeah. you're up against it, we found a way to win, and ultimately that's what Celtic did. Celtic did that day, they were, they were second best for 
90, 95% of the game and they found a way to win. And at the moment, that's what they've got at the moment. You know, they've got that, they've got that winning mentality and that experience. And it's something that, that we've just not been able to go over the line in these last few years. But that day, we went into it. Listen, it wasn't the ideal preparation, obviously. It was the same for Hibs. It was two championship teams, but the thing for Hibs is they had been going through the, the playoff process. Playoffs. So they were still playing these, these competitive games. When we had, I think we had a, was a four-week break between our last league game and the, and the cup final. So we had to fill it. We, we obviously went down to Tottenham and we had a, a good game against their young lads and really good quality player. And it, was a, it was a good warm-up game, but... That's what it was, you know. It's a warm-up game. There's no, like, there's no, there's no playoff game where we win this or we get beaten this without, and we're not getting promoted this year. There was, they were playing competitive games, so there's no doubt they probably would have been in a better place physically going into that game, uh, and as a team going into that game than us. But we were still, we're still Rangers going into a cup final. We're still favourites, still expected to win, and when you're two-one up with ten minutes to go, like. Like we, we shouldn't have lost that game, you know. But no. listen, maybe it was Hibs, maybe it was Hibs's time that day. You know, they waited 116 years to win that, to win that particular tournament. So maybe it was their time, and and all the stars are aligned that day. But it doesn't make it any easier to take for a for a Rangers player to, to accept winning a sorry losing a, a cup final in that manner. So yeah, it was real disappointing. But if we had done that, you know, like it would have showed. I think it would have showed that we were on the right path with with, with Mark because I believed we were. I really did. Mm. Uh, all the time and all these departures. And again, as players, you, you don't know what was going on behind the scenes, uh, whether it be broken down relationships or if there was other things going on, you don't know. But all I know is that I felt we were on the right path as a club. Not just the yeah. first team, I felt as a, we were on the right path. So it was it was disappointing when he left. But if, he, if it had we won that, I think it would have maybe just cemented the fact that maybe, maybe this guy does know what he's doing and he is getting us on the right path. Because that would have been, again, if you look now, for fast forward four years, we're, we're still trophyless, you know. So yeah. it's, uh, and, and we came close that day, really close. And you can say what you want about the Celtic team that we beat in the semi final and, and what the management team. I felt that, and that would be disrespectful to, to, to say negative things about. We were just better on that day and we deserved yeah. to win. Yeah. Penalties. Obviously, what happened later with them bringing Brendan into history, you know, they, they brought a top, top manager in. And, and we've again been, we probably made a few mistakes, is, is, is what the. In regards to in regards to the, the appointments after that, on that day, that semi final at Hamden, I don't think I've seen a Rangers. Team. We've spoke to Mark and we've spoke to David Weir, and I actually don't think that I've seen a Rangers team play as well against Celtic as what we did in that first half. You know, we should have been out of sight. Yeah, I agree. You know, obviously, if you take the if you take the Patrick Roberts miss out of the yeah, equation, yeah. <laughs> We should have been because that, that should have been a goal, you know. But but it doesn't matter. Like chances, you're playing a good team, you know. And ultimately, if they're playing at a higher level and they're even playing at that European level as well, we never we, we never faced that level of opposition that year because we were in the championship. So you can only play against what you're against. So when we came into that game, and I, again, I've told the story a few times that everybody knows how the, how how highly I hold Big Lee Wallace uh, as a player, as and as a person, and as yeah. a captain. And we, we roomed together, and we were in that game, and we came in super confident, you know, because we were playing a good style of football, albeit at the low level, but it doesn't matter. We, we, we managed to hone our game yeah. against these teams, which gave us a confidence and a belief in what we were trying to do. So we went into that game, and I remember the night before, me and Waldo were going through tactics on the, on the suede headboard, but the X's and O's <laughs> all over the place, and we were kind of running through how, how we seen the game, and we kind of thought that, they would have a bit of arrogance about them because they are the champions, they are playing at the higher level, but they're going, they're going into his favourites, and rightly so. But when, when we had watched them, I, I felt they were, that, that we could really get at them, you know, and I felt the way we could play might surprise them a little bit. Or they, I thought they might have thought, well, we'll not do that against us. Aye. Because, yeah, well, well, we did. There was a passage of play, I think it was in the first 10 minutes of the game, where it was passed it out and then it went to midfield and went back to yeah. Rob, Rob 1-2 that we would have, end up switched out the pitch to wee Baz, Baz cut and flipped the ball over the top for a wee diagonal run for me. I take a touch and Craig Gordon makes a good save. Yeah. And see when you look at that, 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 was, that was what we were. You know, in that season and how Mark and Davey wanted us to play, that was how we were. They wanted that, that build up, they wanted that play and for the reason to suck them out, to create yeah. the, the, the bigger spaces at the top end of the pitch. And and that that one passage you seen, that that's that was good play. And you could see them as well that I think it was Beaton had a charge out to somebody. And it was like he was thinking, 
who are they passing the ball against us? And, <laughs> and he went, he went, he went willy nilly, and he actually left his teammates behind them. He hung them out to dry because all with him going on his own, he just passed out, and now he was out of the game. Yeah. He was out of the game, and he exposed the spaces on the other side of the pitch, which is things we had worked on, you know. So the game was great, like you say, we played brilliant. Yeah, we won on penalties, but for me that day, we, we definitely deserved that wee break, that penalty that you need when it comes to penalties. But uh, like the emotion and the, the relief again after that game, and you can see the pictures. You can I see some of the pictures. Even me personally, I don't get like that. You know, I've never got like that. When you win cups and leagues and things, listen, you celebrate it like everybody else. But just the emotion in that day and and what it meant, and obviously what it meant to the fans, and then you seen. I think Big Big Davy, Big Davy Lamb, I'm sure Big Davy was green. Big Davy's got tears. You know, and these are guys that, like, I, I love these, like me, Jimmy and Davy and Stevie Walker and guys at the football club and the staff members are up in the kitchen. Uh, like these, these people have all had a part to play. And like, again, I've known them for years and years and I know what it means to them, you know. I, mean, I know what it meant to them to see Big Davy and to see what it meant to be Jimmy or a Stevie Walker and see so thinking of going back to the kitchen and be Martha and Jean and, and, and uh, Alan in the kitchen and what it's going to mean to them, you know. The yeah. whole emotion. I was almost in tears that day. But then I, then I come to my sense, I think, you know what? We've got an end yet. We need exactly. to go in the final. Yeah. We need to go yeah. in the final. And that, was, that, that hit me pretty quickly. And then you look back on it, but on that particular day, I think there was a message sent. You know, there was a message sent that day that, listen, we've no got, we never had as much money. Like you see, you, look, you only need to look at the recruitment process of that season that we were still in a rebuilding process. But I genuinely felt we weren't far away. I yeah. weren't far away from being in a position, missing, maybe not to win it, but to, to, to challenge. And recruitment's crucial in that. Obviously, for me, I didn't think we needed mass overhaul. I thought we maybe needed three or four guys to come in to strengthen the starting eleven. And by the way, probably the same could be said now. You know, you're still, yeah. and every team would say the same. But I feel we had the, the building blocks there and uh, the core of a good team. If yeah. we could have added, right? again, on the face of it, some of these signings would have been good signings. You think of the Joy Barton signing and Clint Hill coming in with all the experience. And Clint was a good signing for us. Clint was a yeah. really good signing for us. Brilliant character, great guy, becoming a bit of a cult hero within the Rangers fans. And what a guy, real good addition. Uh, obviously, the Joy thing never worked out like you, but I still believe it, it could have. It could yeah. have, because as, him as a football player, there's, there's no doubt that he could have came and been a success. He just wasn't ready to hit the ground running at that moment because of the off-season things that had been happening and uh, he never had too much of a pre-season. But I still believe that had everything not been built up the way it was getting built up but surrounding Joey, I still felt that moving forward he could have been a good addition to the squad. But ultimately, I say recruitment's key. And I think Mark would even admit maybe there was a few mistakes made. I think he has done. He, he has did. Done he admitted to us as well. He says he went, the experience route because of the younger players that he had, yeah. everybody thought that experience kind of side would maybe work in tandem with them. But he did say, yeah. maybe you should have went for the young, hungry, you know, and went after them a wee bit. Yeah, but again, it's the, that, that's that's it. But you know what? You, you make mistakes. And yeah. Like there's, the current management team will have made mistakes in, yeah. in terms of the recruitment. But you know, and again, that's you don't get everything right. But sometimes you need to learn for the mistakes that you've made. And I felt if Mark had been given the opportunity to maybe correct the mistakes that he knew he had made, yeah, I felt we would have been in a better position. And listen, that season we were up against it because of what was happening on the other side of the city. They were having a free season. They were absolutely relentless in, in every single game. Uh, they were unbeaten in the season. That They've set unbelievable amounts of records over the course of the season. And we were getting compared to that. So our, our record in our season was getting compared to that, which was wrong. You know, that was at 39. Again, we finished third that year again behind Aberdeen. And I, I have no doubt if Mark Warburton had still been in charge that we would have finished second. I've no doubt about it. Yeah. No, listen, I've never moved, and it's only an opinion. But I was in it, and I think we were actually second at the time. We were, really. Um, so, I've no doubt we would have finished second. But by the way, in that year, that wouldn't have been good enough, because it would have been second 30 points, 30, 39 points by Celtic. Mm -hmm. So, it would never have been good enough. But you have to look at it objectively, you know, and think, right, that's what we've done. We need to improve on that. We, we, we can't affect that what they've done. We need to improve on what we've done because I think we got, what did we get, 69 points or whatever it was. That. That's, no, that's not good enough. 
Yeah. If you want to win a league, you need to be getting probably around about that 85, 85 point mark. So what we needed to focus on was, right, we now need to get minimum 16, 17, 20 points more next season. How are we going to do that? And that's what we needed to focus on rather than worrying about where they were at. But I think we were getting constantly put under pressure because of how good they were actually performing as well. And ultimately, what was that run about January, February time, Mark, Mark when Neves? Uh, yeah. Which I can, I can only speak from a player's point of view and nothing, not, none of the politics that were going on or, or if there was any going on behind the scenes, I just felt it was wrong, you know, because I felt we were on the right path and it was disappointing for all the players. That, that, yeah. that went that way because we had really we enjoyed our work. I think there was a real good spirit amongst the players, and uh, I just thought it was it was the wrong time because, like I said, ultimately I think it would have been to get second. That would have been if you got second, albeit you would have wanted to be closer. But yeah. that would that would have been the bare minimum. Would have been second, and I think we would have achieved that. Uh, so I was disappointed when he left, and then obviously what happens next happens next, and then. That's where, obviously, I think that there had been, again, there's no disrespect to anybody and it's nothing, absolutely nothing personal. It's, I just felt there, were, there was mistakes made in that next yeah. 14 months. Yeah, obviously, you know, we, we, we went on to great, working under Graham Murray and then uh, Pedro Fischina didn't work out as we all had, had hoped and had planned. I think alarm bells started to ring under Pedro when, I think it was you and Lee Wallace were banished or, or told you would never play again or whatever it was that happened. Well, that's it. Well, well, that was that was a year down the line. That was, you know, that was. Uh, sorry, I, I, that was a good year down the line. That was, the, the, the signs were there right at the start, and it's, it's no, it, was, it wasn't about him not being good enough or no doing this or doing that. I just, there was, I just don't think they maybe understood our, our club, Aye. and we actually had the standing that we had in, in, in our in our national game and how other teams look at you and prepare for you yeah. to play you. I don't think there was an understanding of how that needs to be. You need to, you need to get that. You know, you need to understand that you need to uh, have a, you don't need a connection, but you, you need to have a real understanding of what the club's about. And, yeah. and the ways, and again, this is where I kind of said at the start, that I kind of get is, is Pedro was really focused on working in a certain way, which, he will have success, and he has had success as a manager. But there's, yeah. there's no getting away with it. I just thought, that, like I said, there was, it just never quite got that when we're playing Motherwell or Hamilton or Kilmarnock, that, and this is a, this is a, in its simplest form, by the way, that when you, when you watch Kilmarnock be Motherwell, we would prepare our, our game against either one of the oppositions when we're playing them the following week based on what we've seen in that game. In that and game. That, yeah, I was trying to... To have an understanding that, that 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 what they're doing in that specific game is probably not what they're going to be doing against us. And again, an example yeah. I can give: uh, we played Partick Thistle in a game, and uh, we were uh, we done a work that week about them playing. Did he say was it four three three? Was it four three three? I think he says they'll play. But Connor Salmon was going to be playing as a left winger. Well, it might have been 4 4 2 actually. Because it was 4 4 2. We've done a, they're going to play 4 4 2, and Connor Salmon's going to be left midfield. And Connor Salmon is not a left midfielder. <laughs> yep, yeah, we know that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we can, really get, we can really get at him. And, and the, 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 I think they had one striker with one off. Yeah. Uh, so we've done all this work. And again, the way Pedro worked was. Pretty much after the, after the Saturday was done and we're in on the Monday, we'd do a recovery session Monday, Tuesday. We would actually be preparing for for the up and coming game, which by the way, the, the, the structure of it wasn't wrong or right or again because everybody's got their own ways. Uh, so we started straight away. So we we were, we were working on this pretty much through Tuesday to Thursday, and then your Fridays are kind of more a down day in preparation for the game. So we had, we had worked on all this and this. Particular specific, particularly on that side of the pitch, specific movements, how we can now overload maybe the, the left back with Tab yeah. and go if it was Daniel on that side. So we got to the, the, the game, they were playing a 3 5 2. Connor Salmon was in the plane, and the two strikers were different, I think. You know, or one of the strikers was different. And you were like, like this is the whole, like, we've actually, listen, it shouldn't change anyway because we should be doing what we do. It doesn't yeah. matter what another team, we should always be focusing on what we are. Yeah. You know, yeah make slight changes to things if you're playing against teams to maybe stop them or hurt them if there's, if there's weaknesses there but we should be 
doing what we do, you know, because yeah. we're better and we should be better. So we should go and win the game. If we turn up, we win the game, you know. So we put a lot of work into that. And it, listen, we still won the game, I think, that deal. But in fact, we might have drew. I think we might have drew the game. It might have been 2 2. And that, that was just a wee example of how, and it's, that's, that's in, a, in its simplest form, that yeah. there was this way of working that for me it just wasn't going to happen. And then you had the, the kind of breakdown in kind of communication as well with, with certain things. And it was, uh, it was hard again. It was, tough, it was a tough, tough time to be there because, see, as an experienced player, you could kind of see the way it was going to go. Yeah. And, and you were just powerless, you know, you were powerless to try and, like, to try and stop it. And uh, everybody, again, this is the things that people, again, whether it be me personally or, or other players that were in that dressing room at the time, that you think when you, when you say these negative things, it's, sometimes it's taken as, because I'm saying it's negative, it's, I'm, it's not really negative because I appreciated and respected the way he wanted to work. I just didn't think it was going to translate in our team. Yeah. And yeah. I, so again, it's only an opinion, you know. It's only an, it's only my opinion. But everybody was behind it. Everybody was fully committed. The boys yeah. were given everything they've got. I was given everything they've got, trying to help it along anywhere we could. But we were just we were just toiling, you know. Yeah. What, what we were struggling with over these first two years in the Premier League was, and even even Stephen's first year, I would say, was that that consistency. You know, we were never putting any runs of results together. That so I would say runs of results, runs of wins. So yeah. we were never going for six, eight, nine wins in a row. Which is that's that's what that's what the, that's what title winning teams do. You know, they put these runs, they get wins together over the course of a season. Not just one side, sometimes sometimes twice. You might go eight wins in a row and maybe a couple of draws. Then you might go ten wins in a row further down the season. And as a as a team and as a club, we just weren't putting these runs together. This consistency wasn't there. You know, and that's what we suffered big time over that two years, the yeah. my last two years in, in the Premier League. That we were uh, we were just really. We're missing this level of consistency, and I, and I genuinely believe it was down to not, not abilities. Listen, abilities could always be better and can always improve. Again, that goes for me and everybody else that was in the dressing room. But I, I think it was down to mentalities. Yeah. I think it was down to the mentalities, and that was where we would maybe get a few and maybe a few boys would maybe think, "Oh, we've done it. We've turned the corner." And that's no—you you, can't be that way. You can't be that way in that club when you're going and the, the demands are as great as they are. You, it, it, when you win a game, it needs to be parked, and then you move yeah. on to the next game, and then yeah. you win that game parked. And see, when you get to nine, it's still parked, and you move. And you want you want to even get ten, eleven, and twelve, and you need to have that drive. And you know, it's as hard as to say, Celtic have got that at the moment. You know, they've yeah. got that. They've got drive, and that's the that's where it's hard for for Rangers fans and players to to kind of look at that because they are absolutely relentless at the moment, and it's uh, it's something that we need to find a way to break it. But it has to be through us. It's not to do with them. We can't control that's that. that. What we can control is what we're doing. And I know, we, like, I, I don't think we're far away because for five months of this season, we'll look absolutely unstoppable. Yeah. Uh, so, so good to watch, enjoyable to watch. Doing the Europa League stuff, uh, it was, I used to love turning up and watching the, the, the European performances as well because we were, we were actually better than these, these, these big name teams that were coming to Ibrox. And even when we were going away, I felt we were actually better than them. Yeah, I thought like, when these teams were coming, I like think Feyenoord, I thought it was going to be, you are better than Feyenoord. Mm-hmm. You know, like, the teams were coming, and even the year before, your Villarreal's and your Spartak Moscow's and teams that were coming, I thought, like, again, teams travel differently, you know, so sometimes the, the away team's not necessarily the home team, you see, but you can only play and beat what's in front of you. I mean, you're looking at Portals and Feyenoord's and Villarreal's coming, and you're looking at the games, you're thinking, we are, we are more than match for these teams, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So like I said, for five, the first five months of the season, it was it was looking like all but all but title title contenders, you know. So it says, but again, that's about finding that consistency. That's something that we lacked over that that two year spell. Obviously, Pedro left. Graham Murphy was there for the for the remainder of the season. I was at the game at Hamden where we get cut off Celtic for nothing. Uh, I think it was a yeah. watershed moment in terms of your board at the time because I think. The fans said, right, we appreciate what you've done for the club so far. However, we really need to pull something out of the bag here or we're never going to stop them. And I thought, obviously, it led to the Gerard appointment. But that day turned for yourself as well, I would say, yeah. obviously. Um, and it was a sad end to, to your Rangers career because I think you you probably deserved a better send-off for, for what you'd given the club and, and what you contributed towards. And as a fan, I don't see it as being... Or oh, players being outspoken or whatever happened. 
I see it as there's guys that are certainly Wallace and knew what it took to be a Rangers player. And they were probably... Ultimately, ultimately it's that you've got people that care. Right, yeah. Yeah, you've got people that care. That's exactly and people, yeah. and people that understand that those kind of results and performances are not acceptable. Yeah. And to be honest with you, nothing happened that day. There was a whole different agenda to go on about what went on. But listen, that's for another day. Because right. we're going to keep going on and over. But what it was ultimately is people in, in, uh, within, within the building that never... They had different values. Like I, I can't, you, you go back to 2000 when I come and you've got all these values and all these standards and this this vision again of what I perceive to be Rangers or a Rangers player or a Rangers manager. And there was always a class about it. There was always like there were a, a higher a higher class that were above certain things and they just conducted themselves with a, a real class and humility that that's what I wanted to be as a, yeah. as, a, as a Rangers player. And ultimately when it went down to what happened, that that loyalty, that class, that that standard, just that that like Waller, Waller would never have allowed that to happen. It'd never have happened under him anyway, right? Yeah. But yeah. it's just it would have dealt with in the manner that it should have been dealt with. Is that listen, by the way, you care, I care, but there needs to be some other way. And ultimately, it's not even as if there was a Barney. There was no Barney. There was yeah. no fighting. There was no. Yeah. It was a dressing room Philly people disappointed and angry. And that goes for Jimmy Nicholl, who's representing the football club, who knows what the club's about. He was ranting and raving more than anybody. Yeah. The, the, the current captain, James Tavian there, he was ranting like he was a captain on that day. Like he was ranting and raving. You've got guys like Andy Halliday who was hung out to dry. Guys who yeah. hurts. Hurts to lose anything. You don't mind that game. You know, and, and ultimately, Lee Wallace is the captain of the football club. And, and within that role, you know, he's a star player, but you should be afforded a, you should be afforded a bit of respect. And a bit of voice. By the way, see if it's see if it's the the manager's not going to do it. And again, all I'll say is right. I, mean, I say I don't want to rattle on about it and keep no. going. But remember, where I sit at Hamden when we went to Hamden, I would sit right in the middle. So there'd be half the team would be to my left and half the team would be to my right. And for some reason, we were always in the home dressing room every time home dressing room. So we're in, I'm used to that dressing room, obviously representing Scotland all the mm-hmm. all, for all the years. So I'd be sitting right in the middle. Of it. I think it's probably because the number nine. Jersey is right, is right in the middle of the number. So yeah, I would be yeah. slammed back in the middle. And I remember after the year, I never even played by the way, because my, my, my fate was sealed the minute I went down injured at Easter Road. Yeah. I went down injured at Easter Road and I never kicked another ball for Rangers after that. So I asked myself why. So again, that's another story for another day. I started yeah. one game, one game the second half of the season. One game, and it was a game before that game. It was a Dundee game, 4 0 at home, the one. Scored yeah. the opening goal. Then I never even made an appearance when we're getting beat with Celtic at, at Hamden in my semi-final. It just doesn't make any sense. So my fate, my fate had been sealed way before that. But I was sitting in that dressing room, 4 0 we've been scudded, like you say, I've been scudded. And nobody said anything. There's nobody said a word. And I looked to the left, and I sorry, I looked to the right and I looked to the left, and I caught eyes with Tav. And Tav was like looking at me, saying, like, is somebody going to say something here? Because this is no normal. Rangers yeah. have just been beat in a, in a national semi-final, four 0 eight. That and nobody's going to address address the dressing room. So I think Big Waldo maybe clocked that as well because the big the big fella sees everything and he he just says he just addressed the boys to say look it's no good enough it's absolutely no good enough. Blah. Listen, was there a few things hit or kicked? Absolutely. But by the way, I've. If you, talk to, if you talk to a Coiste or a, uh, a Durante or whatever, they'll have been nailing people against balls and things uh-huh. because you, you lose games or things. And by the way, this is not even just semi finals or old fun games. This could be a, a draw against Hamilton. Uh-huh. Like there could have been proper, the, the proper variables after it. But I addressed it because, again, if anybody who knows Lee Wallace, he speaks in the right manner. I speak quite aggressively, but that's, that's how I speak. <laughs> you know, Big Waldo speaks, Big Waldo speaks calmly. Uh, he was more aggressive than normal, but he speaks proper and he'll get his, he'll always, always get his points over. Yeah, and let's say, was there a few things kicked? Yeah, there was. But ultimately, addressed the dressing room about an un, uh, a performance that was not up to the standards that we should be, that, she, that we should be hitting. And ultimately, that was, that's, that's where it went again. And it needed to be done. It needed yeah. to be done because the players wanted it. You know? And then, as always, when that kind of thing starts, 
what that does is it encourages a bit of debate. It maybe encourages a bit of, of communication, which yeah. are key to any team, to any group. Communication is massive. So what that does is it encourages other people maybe to chop up, and that's what happened. You know, ultimately me and Waldo got hung out to dry, and that, that was that. But again, that, that's, that's done now, you know. Yeah. The club's moved on. I've moved on, Lee's moved on, you know. We're focusing on our jobs that, that, that we're doing for our respective clubs at the moment. But the club's moved on there now. I say the club are not too far away. But it was disappointing. The whole thing for me, it was so disappointing because it, sh- it shouldn't have went that way. Like, we, shouldn't have, we shouldn't have been that. And you say about send-offs and things. You know, I'm, I'm, like, I'm done a bit about Andy Halliday this morning and Andy's, Andy has been let go of, obviously, which is football. It happens. Yeah. But he won't get the chance to walk out of Ibrox again because obviously when it's going on and it's a shame for him, you know. Yeah. We yeah. hope he's going to have got it anyway, but hopefully he was a good player for us over that spell. Like, he's done a really good job for us in that promotion year and even the year after. And uh, these guys will not get that opportunity, but it, it was taken, that was taken away from me as well. And I just felt that, for me, again, I was at a different stage of my career. I seen my career develop at that football club. I still felt I had a lot of things to offer, you know, that moving forward, whether it be as a squad player or even off the off the field behind the scenes and things, I still felt that like my career would maybe progress at that club. And, you know, it wasn't to be because hanging me and making the big drama about me and Lee kind of, it takes away from what's actually just happened on that field of play. And that, that happened a number of times over that year, you know, so uh, it was it was disappointing, you know, just really disappointing. And personally, you know, I, I deal with things, I was really disappointed for Big Lee because he was obviously still there the year before, eh, sorry, the year after. Yeah. And, uh, he was pretty much, he was not going to be getting an opportunity based on that, you know, so it was, I felt for him, I felt, because I know, again, I know what it means to him, and he's, what, what a guy, you know, nobody could ever say a bad word about Lee, that's why it's really, really tough to take for him in that respect. I mean, I'm, I'm different, people have a perception and what have you, and they think because you speak that you're, you're allowed, and if it's not about that, it's not about that, it's about trying to get a group understanding what the standards would it take to play for this football club, and these yeah. things can't be accepted, you know, it's as simple as that. You need to, we need to be, find a way to be better. And like you say, whether that's the board making a decision that's, again, a, a correct decision. You know, like, there's, there's probably no many people over the course of that, that, that 14 month frame that really thought, you know, that's maybe the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it comes back again to how I perceive like that role as manager needs to be earned. You know, it needs to be yeah. earned. You need to have that right in that hot seat. And, uh, I think the that the appointments at, at that time, up until Stephen, were, were probably wouldn't have fallen into that bracket, let's just say. Yeah. Obviously you touched upon you've moved on now uh, your assistant to Cal Robinson at Newcastle Jets. How are you enjoying that side yet? Absolutely loving it. Things have been going great. You know, like obviously it was cut it was cut short uh, because of obviously COVID. Yeah. It was cut short because of COVID, but, but things were going really, really well. I mean We've got a brilliant group of players. We've got a really good group of people at the football club that support us and whatever we're trying to do. The manager's excellent. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I've worked with him as a player, a coach, and he's been my manager. When I've been a player, he's now my manager, and I'm working. I'm working as assistant, and he's uh, he's very very good at what he does. You know, he's, he's, he has gone places. He's he's got good ambitions to, to to get to the top of the game as a coach and listen if I could I saw as a manager and if I can work with him on that that, that journey I, I'd love to do it because I really see the positive things for him uh, on the horizon. But we're really enjoying the work. We've got a brilliant group of players who have responded really, really well to how how we want to work and it's translated into performances and results. So yeah. things are great. We're actually hoping to be back back over working in the next three, four weeks uh, with, with a view to finishing the last four or five games of the season off. Well, so you have no cut it short, Kenny, no? You have no rush to end the season? You'll finish it. You'll finish it. Uh, there was no agenda, isn't it, Well, yes, and there might be. The agenda might be we need to finish it to get uh, <laughs> to, to get to the But uh, that's, uh, no, we want to finish. There's only four or five games left. Uh, so they've made a commitment. I think things are looking not too bad in terms of, in terms of the pandemic over there. Obviously, they're still, you know, being really cautious and everything, but I think they've got the the green light that we can get back to to finishing off that last four or five games of the of the of the league season, which will then lead into the playoffs, which will be another couple of weeks after that. So yeah, there's a commitment being made to get it finished by end of August, I think, uh, at the latest. Yeah. So aye, hoping to be back at work soon. Uh, but no, loving it, absolutely loving it. It's been 
it's actually a refreshing to have a wee step away from the from the Scottish game, the UK game yeah. as well, and the like that that like, gets put on you when you're in that that you're away, and it's like it's a uh, real good, and a really good quality as well. You know, like it's, it's an underrated league for some really good players, and I've been really really surprised and uh, about the level of, uh, of the players' ability and the teams. All, all the teams that were played actually have got really good players within it. So yeah, really enjoying it. Just looking forward to getting back and and hopefully finishing off this season. We're on a positive note, uh, but again, the real eye was, was always going to be a, on next season and yeah. recruitment, getting, getting a strong score together to really go and be competitive next year. Good. Thanks very much, Kenny, for your time and thanks for your efforts in no a jersey. Um, as I yeah. say, many great memories associated with your time at the club and we'll be forever grateful for that. Thanks very much, Kenny. No problem, pal. Enjoy that. Cheers.